Okay. Yeah, let's try again. Is it, can you see me okay? Is it clear? Is everything okay? You're coming through really clear. I think it's waiting to load your video. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds because <laughs> I can hear you like picture perfect. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's my connection or it just needs a bit of time. That's all right. We can give it time. I'm a big okay. time It's woman. fine. It's fine. These things happen. That's what I was saying yesterday. We don't have a crew behind like doing everything for us so we'll get there <laughs> how are you today How's i'm fine everything? i'm fine let me know if it's loaded so then i can try the other connection yeah i can see me yours is still <laughs> loading you look and sound perfect which one of us though <laughs> well i have already seen your face so i know you're slaying on your end Please, Instagram, work for me. Oh, it will work. It will work. You don't have to worry about it. I, I have all the time in the world. I just need... Yeah, if someone can type underneath and let me know if you can see both of you. Okay. Great. Can they see us? Yes, but you can't see me, right? I can't see you, but if they can see us, great. Maybe if... Only if you, like, try to change maybe the connection. Hmm. Let's see. I don't see you now. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Give it a give it a few seconds. Okay. I see you. Okay, so they are saying that you have a circle. Wait, just give it a few seconds. There, I think it's okay now. I think. Fingers crossed. We just can need a few seconds. Us, it's fine. We can it's see you. The only problem is there's a bit of a delay. <laughs> there's a bit of a delay. Wait, okay. Okay. Let's see. Tell me something. Tell me your news. Tell me about your day so I can see if it works. Uh, I did absolutely nothing productive today. Great. And it works. <laughs> yes. Uh, that doesn't matter because, you know, not all days are the same. Exactly. I saw this... Uh, like, uh, you know, like pictures on Instagram and stuff, and it's a drawing of yes. this, this girl, she's like a superwoman, let's say, and she has the, what's it called? The, the cape. Like, yes, yeah, so she has the cape, and she's like, you know, today, like, superwoman, I'm doing everything, this and that, and it says, like, you know, these days are great, but these days are also okay, and that picture shows that she's, yeah. like, under it, like, you know, snuggling in it. I'm here for all of that. It's a journey, especially because, like, I have a disability, so chronic pain and that kind of play into, like, there are some days I have a lot of energy if, like, my pain is low, but other days that, like, I don't have any, any, eh, any energy, so I'm having to, like, learn how to be okay with the days when I'm not being as productive as, like, society tends to make us think we should be. Mm. Um, because like healing your body is just as important as like being productive. So, you know, <laughs> I'm here for it. No, it's, it's good. I, I didn't show you my top. <gasps> <laughs> oh, dang it. I forgot to put these in. Uh, they're, they're, oh, rainbow they're, earrings. they're like homemade. Yeah. They're rainbow earrings. You nice. Know. Nice. Pride things. Exactly. Uh, okay, so first things first, you need to introduce yourself and let us give us a few things about yourself, whatever you want. It's up to you. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ashley. A lot of people call me Ash. I'm uh, a biracial woman. I have a disability. Uh, I'm also queer. I identify as um, a woman. I use mm -hmm. she, her pronouns, and I'm pansexual. Um, and I really am out here just trying to kind of show the world that you can like have a 
fulfilled life despite like being chronically ill or sometimes terminally sick like I have a lot going on but like at the mm -hmm. end of the day I'm still just me and I'm just like everybody else trying to figure out what the hell the me is so mm -hmm. that's kind of who I am <laughs> Uh, and you also you have your own blog, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. So I started my blog. Advertise it. I'm here. Tell me. Tell me about it. <laughs> Stop. Um, so I started my blog. My website um, is more than a disability um, because what I noticed growing up and being as sick as I am. So I have cerebral palsy, and I also have another medical condition that, um, if not treated, could kill me that sounds morbid sorry um it's, okay. it's good because if i mean if you want to explain more about yeah. that part because um, a lot of people uh, don't know and i mean i got to learn a lot about uh disabilities and i mean yeah general, i try to keep myself educated but there's a lot of things that we don't know if you you don't actually try to find out about them for sure um so a lot of people tend to focus i what you probably can't see is I'm sitting in my wheelchair. Um, my cerebral palsy affects like the middle of my back down. So a lot of people tend to look at my level of physicality and that's the only condition they see. Um, but truthfully, that is the easier of the two. Um, my other condition um, really sucks sometimes uh, to, to just say it like it's not sunshine and rainbows and flowers all the fucking time um but i started my website uh more than a disability one because what i needed at the time was somebody to tell me that they understood like I appreciate my medical team and my doctors. They have the knowledge that I will never have that I need to survive. But I didn't have any resources as somebody who was sick coming from somebody else who was in a similar position to say, like, I understand that this is hard. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I started kind of my blog one, because I needed healing. Um, so I have medical PTSD from a complication of my primary condition that almost killed me when I was 20. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I went through a really dark period um, for a couple of months, not understanding like what I was going through. Um, so I kind of decided then that I needed to start my website, one, to kind of give me a place to heal and be safe um, with my words and my experience, um, because before the blog, I didn't really talk about it. Um, but I then realized like there are parents with kids with chronic illnesses and disabilities that people aren't talking about us like we're this secret or severely marginalized like, group of people. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show myself, but also the world like we're here. <laughs> like you, you can't not acknowledge that we exist mm -hmm. like the chance the chances that you're going to run into somebody with a limitation or a chronic illness or a disability are so high. Like the, the community of people with disability is like, I think as of like last month, the highest amount of people in a minority. So I wanted to start my website to kind of show people like you can have a beautiful life despite really, crappy circumstances to give myself a place to heal but also to kind of educate the world because I, I was really angry for a really long period of time because the world is not accommodated for me or, or my community um either of them um so I, I wanted to start it to be like hey i'm here and you need to start listening so that we can have change because I'm not going anywhere and neither are the communities. So that's, you know, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> uh, people are loving you here in the comments. And Elena Hi. said, CP sister. Girl, do you have <laughs> cerebral palsy too? I have spastic dysplasia and I'm all for my CP warriors. I, um, I'm in a foundation uh, for the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Foundation. I'm currently celebrating 
the end of CP awareness. Um, so I'm glad you're here because you rock. <laughs> uh, so about your daily life, like how is it uh, with living with these conditions? Is it, you know, so you have like good days and then you have bad days. Is it something oh. you can, like, you know, maybe you can control in some way? Mm. So, First, it's definitely a journey. Like, it's not linear. I have... It, it was weird. I think some one day last week, I had a lot of energy. My pain levels were really, really low. My spasticity was, like, really well controlled. So I was going around the house almost manic because I felt so good. Um, and then there are other days that... So I had to knock off work an hour and a half early on Saturday night because my symptoms kicked in a little bit too quickly and I couldn't sit up. I couldn't hear. Um, so it, it's definitely a, a journey. Um, and one of the most difficult things in my experience with my journey is understanding that day to day could look very different. Um, and that impacted like my, friendships and my family um because like like I could make plans with you for example uh on a day that I'm feeling great and five days later um I could be feeling very different and that's that's really hard to deal with sometimes um but I think the most difficult part for me other than like friends understanding that is like now trying to be a professional in a in a working environment where you're expected right to fulfill your obligations. Um, but I've had to learn that my body comes first. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's a really tough lesson because I'm stubborn as hell. Um, and I'm going to try and give it my all. Uh, and my body could very well tell me like, Hey, we're not, we're not doing that. Um, so just trying to accept that like day to day looks different. And that's not just a disability, like that could be somebody's self-worth and identity and, uh, oh, I don't know, um, like that's applicable to like a lot of things in life, like day to day. So you just kind of have to ride it out and, and be aware of it and kind of be responsible for how you respond. Because I've tried to push through it uh, almost to the point of like making myself sick. And then I pay for it. So uh, as I've gotten older, I've had to understand like, hey, you have to be, you have to listen to your body. Because if not, like there are some pretty big consequences. So, you know. I, I do agree with that because, uh, I mean, I've noticed myself doing that for work. Mm -hmm. uh, or for things that, you know, we have to do. Exactly. Which, yes, but the thing is, you know, you push your. Actually, I read this post the other day that was saying that you know you're killing yourself for a job that if you die that would tomorrow, replace you. Yeah, like that that. if you die tomorrow, by the end of the month, the position will be covered. Like you know, yeah. no one's gonna like really. They would care, obviously. I mean, if you have good relationship with your job, but at the end. But of the they day, would. They would move on and survive. Yes, and that's the thing that you know people from. I've noticed it in a, in a variety of jobs that I've been to that, you yeah. know, if you're, you're not feeling well, like I really have like really hard, uh, like monthly days, you know, like my periods, mm -hmm. it's like, like but, it'll take you out. Yeah, I can't like the first day I'm awful, but mm -hmm. and I always would like push myself and I'm like, why am I pushing myself? Like, you're not feeling okay. You're like crying from pain and you're pushing yourself to go to work. Mm -hmm. And it, it's crazy, like, it's not, and you know, at the end of the day, it's not even your work, but even if it was yeah. yours, like, you know, you, you shouldn't do that to yourself, yeah. because, you know, you come first at the end of the day, because absolutely, if something happens to you, I don't know, like, you know, you break your hand, and you're having pains and stuff, and you're pushing yourself, mm -hmm. you know, when you have those pains, like, 30 years after, that job is not gonna, like, pay you in any way, like, you need no. to recover at the time that you need, whether it's, like, one day, or whether it's a month. Absolutely. And, and I feel we all, do, most of people do that. You know, we push yeah. ourselves for work or for whatever other reason, but usually work comes first. Um, 
Yes, I do have the standard. But do you have the support that's needed where you work? I haven't been there very long. Okay. Um, I, I recently just started a new job, unfortunately. Um, and I say that because I loved my, my previous job. Can I ask um, the, you what, the, what was the previous job and what is this job? Like? Sure. So my previous job that I left because of my... Um, my physical well-being um i had just had surgeries and it, i can't walk very well right now so it was not safe for me but i worked with um young teenage girls who were taken from their families and put into dcf custody because of abuse um and they have severe behavioral issues um that is a result of the abuse that that they've yeah, sustained yeah, yeah. um so that was what i loved it was I am a social worker by education, um, mm -hmm. but I had to, it, it's funny, we're, we're talking about like putting yourself first in jobs uh, or outside of jobs because I had a surgery that we were expecting. I took time off and an incident, an accident happened and things got a lot worse and I had another surgery a month and a half later and I had to say like, I, I want to do this but I, I can't anymore. Um, so I had to love me more than I loved my kids and my job. Um, so I, I had to move on and, and that's still really tough because I didn't make that decision myself. My body did and I had to respect it. But now I work at a hospital. Um, I'm a clinical receptionist. Um, so I help get patients ready for surgeries and procedures. Um, and I love it um, because it gives me I think I was kind of meant to, to find that job in the moment, given all of my medical stuff and yeah. the very reason why I started my website. Uh, so I, I think it all kind of played out the way it was supposed to. Um, but you just got to gotta take it and run. But um, I get support where I can and I advocate for myself when I can. Um, and if not, like a lot of other people with, with challenges... I adapt because the reality is I, I, we live in a world that isn't meant to accommodate or isn't set up to accommodate persons with limitations and, and disabilities um, because we live in an able-bodied world. Um, so I, I adapt where I have to. Um, I hope in maybe my children's lifetime that they will adapt less out of necessity and the world will be better for them but until then uh i'll survive and advocate where i can and make noise where i can and be a thorn in somebody's side <laughs> that's good that's what we need people to change this world for the best. basically yes but so what is the things that you would uh because i don't know how it is like where you live obviously yeah. i can only speak for uk and greece because that's that's the countries i've been but how is it for, you know, for someone that's in a wheelchair? Like how, you know, maybe you want to, I don't know, how about going to the cinema or something that is, you know, for someone else really simple? Yeah. Uh, so I think it definitely depends on location. Um, I've, I live in Vermont now and I've lived in different counties within Vermont. Um, and I would say... Sometimes the older a city is, um, the less accessible they tend to be because um, the ADA, there are certain loopholes in like the American, um, the Accessibility Act, that a building should be accessible, but if it was built before a certain time and accommodations can't be added to the building, it can be left to, to stand the way that it is. Um, so that sometimes sucks and there have definitely been places where inaccessibility makes me feel like a burden. Uh, I went to court with a survivor a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, my wheelchair, uh, couldn't fit. Like I only fit in the back and it blocked the door. Um, so I was constantly apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, or feeling like I don't belong. Um, in a space where I had every right to be. Um, and that was, I think, a part of the reason why I was so mad 
growing up is and and why I struggle with like internal struggles of like feeling like a burden or that I don't belong um, because society has kind of put us in a position to apologize for our way of life and our very beings instead of apologizing for being the way that they're set yeah, up yeah 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 um but I'm trying to unlearn those now and then just kind of my favorite expression right now is to claim my space um like like it is okay that I take up space in literal ways and metaphorical ways like it's okay that I exist it is fantastic that I exist as a woman who is queer and by like I have a right to exist um as does everybody in this world but especially the populations that are a minority who are not celebrated and embraced um because we're here like mm -hmm. so we need to be uh but conversations like this help for sure Yes, for sure. That's 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 the goal here. Let me see the comments one minute. Ella says historical landmarks as well. Yeah, that, yes. Like, like I don't think I could go. I, I think the Eiffel Tower, I don't think is accessible. Like, I think there are like no way. multiple. Yeah, because you have to walk upstairs, right? Um, and I I acknowledge the fact that I am um semi ambulatory which means i i can walk or once i'm fully healed i can walk very tiny distances mm -hmm. um and i have the privilege that if like a restaurant that i frequently go to has a step to get in i literally pick my wheelchair up to get in oh that's um, so bad and i acknowledge that that is a privilege for me because i physically can right now but somebody else might not be able to and you wouldn't ask them to crawl on the floor to get in so what can you be doing to invite us in to your space um but you know don't worry i'll take on ableism you know it's just small things really feminism ableism I'm, I'm just out here you, trying you can, you can yes just small things Th really. things with someone's asking Tori's Silverge. Ask, do you have kids now? I do not have any children. Um, I can biologically have children, um, mm -hmm. but because of the way that I walk and the device in my head, um, I acknowledge that it would be a high risk pregnancy to carry my own children. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be devastated if something happened to them because of my symptoms. And having worked in with children at, in custody I love children I have I have a godchild that I adore and children have always been a part of my life so I think it's probably likely that I will foster and adopt um, because those children are already here and they they deserve to be loved and valued and validated um, so I would love to have mine and maybe find a king or queen to love me with my happily ever after um, but <laughs> I hope to have children, but I probably won't make a family in the conventional yeah, or yeah. traditional way because we're not out here trying to be traditional folks. We're, we're not exactly. I'm past that. Like, I'm past we're that really. to be happy and, right. and yes, that's, that's from our Curly says yes. Definitely have to listen to your body, even if you don't want to. Yes, I do agree on oh. that. A hundred percent. Like somebody once told me. You're going to listen to your body when it asks things of you, mm -hmm. or you're going to be made to listen when it tells you to. Yes. And that was something that really stuck out to me because, like, I'm very stubborn. Mm -hmm. I'm very stubborn. Um, but if I push it too far, like, I know I'm going to pay for it days later. So it's a part of being mature for me personally and accepting my condition was accepting to learn my body and and learning to listen to it um because i can't love myself and destroy the vessel that i reside in like that's not love mm -hmm. for me um let me read this and then we'll ask you the next question <laughs> uh okay you said something about your kids so i didn't know if you meant the kids you work with or children at home no of <laughs> course um yeah. so i do refer i do refer to them as as our kids um but no, they're not biological. They they were the 
the young women that we worked with, sometimes you could say clients or patients, but to me, they're people and there are yeah. kids in our care. So those were the lights of my life. <laughs> that must have been a tough job to do because I actually was looking into it uh, a couple of months back and yeah. I was like, in general, I like jobs like that. So I yeah. always try to find something similar to do. But I was like, you need like a lot of patience and a lot of like this. That's a lot, a lot of, of work a lot there. of patience, a lot of love, um, and an ability to just listen. Mm -hmm. um, but I, because of the trauma I've had, I, I'm somebody who has been abused, um, mm -hmm. who has experienced assault, uh, who, who has lived through similar things to the things that my kids have survived when one of them looked at me and said you don't understand I wanted to be the person who was able to say you're right I might not understand everything but I hear your pain and like I can sit with that and and embrace you and empower you despite it like I can still sit with you um and thankfully they I hope that we made a difference in their lives, but I know my life will always have been better because of that experience. Like they taught me so much from life. Um, and like, I know I'll be better off because of their experiences and lessons, you know? Um, yes. Well, I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> well, I'm sure you made the difference because I know you were a month or two, yeah, I think it's that much. And I feel you made a difference in my life. So you must have made a difference in their life. So there you go. That's, that's what I have to say on that. Um, but okay, so let me ask you now about the LGBT plus community. Uh, let's do it. Yes, let's go. This is only the second time that I've been in a live where I openly discuss this. So the first time I did it with Kelsey. Yes. Um, yeah. We love you, Queen. Um, <laughs> but let's do it. It is Pride Month, and we're out here. There you go. Uh, I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna ask you anything uncomfortable. Or anything. I'm just gonna ask you in general your yeah. views about the community of how they deal with people. Uh, you know, whatever disability it might be. If yeah. I, don't, I don't like. Okay, let me tell you this. I think I've told you this, but I will say it again. Uh, so I did, one of the first lives I did was with uh, this woman, which is amazing. You need to go and follow her. Uh, okay. And it's, her page is called Beauty Mark Community. Ooh. So she, she, she is all about, you know, promoting people, you know, that go through some disability or they have or they were born later on in life and all that. But she is changing that uh, stigma around the world of, disability yes. and she's calling it you are so adorable both of you we will take that <laughs> thank you um yes so she's changing that world and she's she's calling it beauty beauty mark instead of disability I so like i that. really like using that instead of disability it's okay. interesting you say that only because there's such a divide right now that I'm seeing like within the community is to their comforts with the, the labels right yeah um so I've heard I've heard some I'm gonna be careful how I say this <laughs> mm -hmm. okay oh, come on. whatever you say someone's gonna get offended so might as well say it how you won't say it so I've heard some of my able-bodied friends um, are deeply uncomfortable with the word disabled like they almost cringe trying to use that word around me and I'm like no that's what I am like that is a part of who I am so th there's a a big divide in between like do people do some of us like to be called disabled mm -hmm. or do they like some of the terms that I've seen more that able-bodied people refer to us as which is like differently abled or 
that's that's the first one that comes to I my don't mind. I think people really like that don't have notes. Yeah, no. Um, and I admit it it is completely different from person to person. Um, yeah. but I think for me, I spent so many years. I, I think I I didn't really stand in my power as a person with disability until I was like twenty two. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, call me anything you want. <laughs> But, like, don't call me disabled. Like, it was a literal slap in my face. Okay. Because I was ashamed of who I was. So mm -hmm. that was a me issue. But now, at 29, who's kind of... Not even kind of. I'm fucking out here. Who's embracing who they are. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm disabled. And that's okay. If you're uncomfortable by that, it becomes... What is it about that that makes you uncomfortable? And can we look within you or within society? Um, but it, it does kind of vary from person to person. Because I was first like, mm, no, mm -mm. Mm. Like, if you would have told 16-year-old me that I would have a blog that was literally about my disability, I'd have been like, hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's yeah, whatever I've the one... Uh, prefers uh, exactly so it's yeah as different as it and it might vary I try to address it in the same way that I would address somebody's identity and pronouns and sexuality and that is if you don't know ask mm. I would rather you ask me a million times than to not ask me once and to make a blunder that is derogatory and hurtful to our community. Um, so just ask. Like, it's it's okay. And I don't know, actually, I don't know that I've ever had an experience with a person with disability that got offended that somebody asked a question. But I know so many stories of heartache and pain that somebody didn't and then made an assumption or a judgment that was completely wrong and that destroyed us. So, mm -hmm. you know, disabled, queer. Just yeah, but that's the thing. People don't like the word queer also because it used to be an offensive word. Right. Like, no. Like, I find, I find comfort in, in it because it's the umbrella that still allows you to stand under it and be who you are. Mm -hmm. But it, Labels can be used to divide people or unite people. So when I think of disability, disabled, or I think of queer, immediately I go to two amazing communities that have such enriched histories and a lot of pain. Don't, don't discount that. There's a lot of pain. But there is power and pride and strength and resilience that comes under that. Oh, it mm -hmm. gives me chills. Like <laughs> those labels, we can either celebrate them within ourselves or society is going to break us down outside of it. But that doesn't change who we are. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope that it becomes a more accepting place. And click LGBTQ. Can we please acknowledge that there are queer disabled people out here? There you go. That's what I want to ask you now. Please. About, yes, let's head right to the LGBT class community. Can and we? Let me, because obviously, yes, I don't have any idea. I will tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about the community? How do they, do they help in any way? Uh, is it, you know, hide them, put them in the closet, you know, with the rest of the no. gay people that are hiding? You know, how is it? No, no. I don't think we're <laughs> hidden. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't think, um, as far as the LGBTQIA plus community is concerned, I don't think they're trying to put us in a box. Okay. I, I do think that sometimes it, it is you look at somebody I'm in a wheelchair right now it's quicker to look at me and think disabled um, than it is to ask what else might be going on 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's give us a seat at that table to ask questions. Um, be, if for no other reason, but we are a marginalized group of people as well. We know what it feels like to not be invited, to not be talked about, to not be thought about, or even included in conversation. Mm -hmm. Just let us at the table. Mm -hmm. um, like I have an amazing book that I read. Um, I wish I had brought it over, <laughs> but um, it's all about um, intimate, loving relationships, partnerships for people with disabilities mm -hmm. um, and, and how you can support your partner and, or if you're, if, or if you're in my position, how to love yourself. Um, and one of the chapters was about what happens when you're, when you're queer too. And it's like nothing different. It's just another facet of who I am. So I try to talk about statistics. I try to post resources I try to be a safe place for my friends that are queer and a part of the community. Um, and I also know that those people are safe places for me too. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to look at somebody holistically and not just pieces of them. Um, just as I'm disabled, just as I'm biracial, just as I'm queer, like, you have to look at all of me and love all of me and celebrate all of me, not just the parts of me that are easier for you to understand or digest, you know? Mm -hmm. What would you like to see? Okay, so for people that are disabled in this community, what would you like from the community to see? Like, what would you like them to change, you know, to better things? Mm. I'm guessing you're thinking of a lot of things, but you know, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's another live. <laughs> um, I think the first piece of advice I would give somebody is you're not being too much. And what I mean by that is, um, it's okay to be all of who you are. Like you don't have to be content to just be a person with disability. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't have to deny who you are as, as your identity and your pronouns and your orientation. You, you don't have to keep all of that from other people because you're afraid of being too much. Like, that's society talking. That's that burden talking. Um, so I, I, want, I want us to sit in a place where it is okay that you are all of those things. Like, all of those things are amazing uh, on their own but together that just makes a badass human being so embrace it celebrate it don't don't wait until your life is threatened i i almost died at 21 um mm, ow and it was the hardest thing i have ever gone through but i physically but mentally to realize that I had almost died and I wasn't loved. I didn't love myself. I didn't leave a mark. I didn't make a difference where I could. That rocked me to my core. I wanted to people please and I wanted to be this perfect little version of what everybody else wanted of me. Mm -hmm. And it took almost dying for me to say, no, that's not going to work anymore. I am no longer going to water myself down for you. Because if I die and I don't live as who I am, what, what was I here for? To, to be a, a shadow of what you wanted? No. Mm -mm. Not going to do it. <laughs> And now you're here and then changing people's lives. Well, I don't know about all that. But I'm, but I'm <laughs> here. Saying, let and... the other people, let the other people say it for you. That's okay. You shouldn't, you know, you should, I feel a lot of the times that, I mean, I do it. And I've noticed a lot of people do that. But mm -hmm. if you're not, how should I put it nicely? 
you know, Coffee? if you're down to earth, let's say, okay. uh, you know, you usually don't give yourself, you know, that, you know, you're doing a good exactly. job. You, you know? don't stand in your power because you don't, yes. you don't realize it. Which, but you are because you're out here, you're writing your blog, you're doing all this from Instagram. And also the post that I really like, I want to ask you, not ask you, talk about this, yeah. is about people touching your wheelchair. Tell us about yeah. that. Because I, I think people... Hyped. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess... Oh. I know, I bet. I mean, I did. Like, when I read it, I was like, what? Like, I'm getting that a lot of people are not educated on topics because, you know, it hasn't, yeah. it, it hasn't came their way. But yeah. at the same time, I feel some things are also like common sense. Like, I wouldn't come up to you and Im Im even I wouldn't come up to you and hug you yeah. without being, hey, can I have a hug? Yeah. Like, I, I think people don't understand, um, like, the, the mobility aids that we use are not just things that we use. Like, they are very intimate parts of who we are. Mm -hmm. The wheelchair that I have, I haven't replaced because I graduated college in it. I was using it when I fell in love with the person that I love. That is that is never going to happen for me. But um, <laughs> what? The, what was that? <laughs> we'll get to that. Like it has paint in mm -hmm. on the wheelchair of a party that I went to. Like it is an intimate extension of who I am. Yes. Um, and I and I acknowledge that a lot of the times it comes from a good place. Like, hey, you see me struggling and you want to help. And I am eternally grateful for that. Mm. But just as you hopefully would touch someone without their consent, yeah. don't touch an extension of me without asking me first. Um, because I use that just as often as I use my shoes and yeah. my phone. Like it is a part of me. So I'm sorry, but if you touch my wheelchair or my cane without asking me, you you just, it's going you don't down. you don't want that in your life. You do not want that stress in your look. I am a five foot five woman, and I will come at you like a pit bull. You don't want that in your life. You don't. You know, I I when I did um, this interview that I was telling you about with Beauty, yeah. Park, uh, she was saying because she has a limb difference. Uh, yeah. And oh, when I heard this story, I almost lost it. Like, okay, so she was at the supermarket with her children. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is when one of them was like really, you know, like a baby still. Yep. So she had him in one arm and she was like trying to get something. I think something fell. Like, I think that was mm. what happened. And this lady came up to her and took her child off her. Like... <laughs> Because she was like, okay, you know, she has like a disability. She Ooh. obviously, need, I know, Ooh. I know. I was like, you were catching. Yes, I. Like, but also, I, do you notice that the first thing they did was grab the child instead of asking her, one, do you need help? But also, helping her with the task. She was. Tr why was your first concern the yeah. child? Because it was easier. Because it's cute, and I don't mean it as in the child. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the circumstance was cuter. Like, no, you don't get to pick and choose and dictate how we accept help, how we need help. You need to ask. I know, and, and that's that's what she was saying, because she's all about, you know, obviously... Right? Uh, yeah, educating people about... Uh, a lot Dude, of I'm sorry, but it's... I get hyped when somebody touches... Me and my like <laughs> wheelchair. I can't imagine me as a person if you were to touch my child. I know. Yes, that's crazy. <laughs> but but that's that's what she was saying. That you know, if if you want to learn, like you know, ask. Yeah. Or if if someone you, you think needs help, like ask them. I mean, get yeah. get the people because she said most of the times, you know, she will. She's, she's open, like, to... She said most people that have a disability are willing to, to actually educate other people. Absolutely. Instead of you, like, that's what she was saying, like, if she, let's say she's struggling to reach herself. Yeah. You know, she wants to do that by herself. Like, she actually wants to grab it by herself. She doesn't need someone, you know, to walk behind her, take it. And, you know, she just wants, you know, just ask if the other person needs help. Because 
you he are wants to be seen. Yeah, I get the 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 idea behind it that you know it's really nice because people can just walk by and just be yep. yep. at all. Yep. So you do get you know I get the the nice thing behind it, mm -hmm. but at the same time is you're putting them in the what we were saying like you know they are not able. Or, they're a victim. They're, yes. they're a victim of the circumstances. Yes, so, and and we're not. Yeah. So, so but, yeah, just ask because like. <laughs> Oh, just ask. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. No, don't touchy and just ask. Yes, That's it. yes. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, what was he trying to save a kid from falling? I'm confused. No, the the child wasn't falling when she was just. The, the child was probably more secure because she had done. She has learned how to care for her child as a as a mother. But also what she has to do as a woman with a disability. So the, the, to, to put that in perspective, mm -hmm. the child was probably safer in her arms and was probably in more danger yeah. if somebody were to surprise her and take the child from her. That's bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, so, ooh. yeah. I know. But yes. So let's go back. Back to the <laughs> back to Pride Month. <laughs> so yeah, right. I want to ask you around you coming out. Uh, when did you come out? Um, so I I don't think that there's an official for me. There wasn't an official date or or yeah. like I have come out multiple times. Um, I would say the live that I did with Kelsey was huge it was the first time that i had publicly acknowledged um my identity and the the situations that led me to understanding oh mm -hmm. this oh <laughs> um but i would say i you know i came out to came out to my best friend um when a situation happened that broke my heart um and a part of that was who i loved mm -hmm. um in order for them to understand that they had to understand um yeah. so i would say it's a it's a lifelong thing mm -hmm. it's not something that's one and done i i wish that it was but it's not right because um as you grow and encounter more people you might have more situations where somebody doesn't yet know and, and they're going to find out. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say only just recently, um, I moved away from my home country and um, situations where I didn't feel safe to express who I was. And um, I, I hid that for a really long time. And at some point it, it just became, I just had enough. Mm. I am like or maybe other people feel differently in, in the community and that's great but my identity and who i am does not change because of who i love and i say that to say whether i love somebody who is male or female or non-binary i am still somebody who loves reading i would rather take tea over coffee any day um i am such a foodie um, I express myself through language. None of those facts about me changes because of who I love. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Um, it might change your perception of who you thought I was, but that's not on me anymore mm -hmm. because I don't want to be unhappy. I, I don't want to be out here telling people to love themselves and that they're worthy if I wasn't telling me that first by saying it is okay that you feel this way. The, the last person that I was in love with, while it might not have always been great mm -hmm. uh, and it, it wasn't, I learned so much about who I was as a person and my capacity to love and forgive and accept and learn and I learned that because of the person I was with. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I, I wouldn't change that for the world. <laughs> um, but I, I definitely think it's going to be a process as I encounter more people. Um, but I hope, I hope that you feel brave enough as people to be who you are. I hope that society is accepting enough to allow you that space. And if you don't feel loved or safe, I got you. Like I can be that for you because I know what it feels like to not have that. And a part of accepting my pain is, was having to learn. It was okay if I went through that, but I'll be damned if I allow somebody else to go through that so I can be that person for you. But to anybody that, that thinks that they're less than or, or feels problematic or different, like you are so loved and so special and so beautiful. And I would have you no other way than who you are. Um, so I hope that the world changes so that you feel brave enough to be that person. Um, but if not, I'll be here to celebrate you. That's so sweet. I'm like, I'm just, you can take the light now, do what you want. <laughs> Say what you want after that. That was so sweet. That's so, because that's what I, uh, I noticed also when we, I mean, we've been following each other, as we said, the past months, one or two months, whatever it is. But, you know, what I've got from you, it's like I've known you for years, which, uh, I will say this, I'm going to say this now. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Yes, because uh, it's amazing because the Instagram, you know, you have that thing of, you know, people showing off their, you know, perfect life. And, you know, everything's perfect and all that. But, which is not, no one has the perfect life. And that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. But it's so nice to meet people. Like, if you use social media, right, you can actually oh, meet yeah. people that are actually want to change the world and are actually yeah. helpful and nice. And, you know, you can, you know, you can get educated about stuff. They can help yeah. you in so many ways. And I will say that, when I got a DM a few days ago from, from this girl that she's having issues because she can't yeah. come out because she's uh, obviously not in Europe, but, you know, I panicked. I mean, you were there. <laughs> and I said, I, you, I texted, I called you and I was like, okay, well, how can we help this, this girl yeah. because she wants to escape her house and she's trying to go to Canada and this and that. And you were like, okay, you know, we didn't know if it's fake or if it's true, Please. but yeah, let's help her. Like, how can we help her? And you were like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to call these people that I know that are in Canada. They will send yeah, us this. We'll, you know, like getting this plan to actually help this person that we don't even know and we don't even know if it's like a fake profile yeah. or anything. And, and that is amazing, you know, getting together. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, for the LGBT, it doesn't matter if it's for spreading awareness about yeah. something. It's you know, that you can actually, you know, don't be shy. Okay, who's going to help me? Like, you know, you've met this person. You've seen yeah. what they, you know, they represent. And, and that's what you will, you know, you, I feel people will show the true colors at some point. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I tried to be something other than who I was for a really long time. And I wasn't happy. And I am a hot mess, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> don't let this fool you. I'm a hot mess. I love too quickly. I forgive too easily. I am very opinionated. I am a hot mess. <laughs> but I am perfect in all of my imperfections. Like, and I, I hope that's what I can show the world. Um, because I didn't grow up seeing that representation for my, com at the time, for my only community as somebody with a disability, I needed someone and I still do. I still need someone to show me that it is okay to not be okay or that it's okay to not have everything together. So I'm going to show people that because it helped me and it helped me heal. Um, so I'm just trying to bring everybody on for the crazy ride that is my life. <laughs> Uh, I think we all are hot mess at the right. end of the day. I just think we're trying to like kind of figure things out. And the thing is that yeah. I do, we all have like some kind of trauma or, you know, yeah. we all have things going on. We all have wounds. 
Yes, some some people have it worse, obviously. Yeah. Of course. Like, yeah, as you tell me, you know, you had all this... Uh, These but teenagers, me. yes, you had all these teenagers, teenage, ki- teenage girls that went through, you know, so many things that I probably didn't, and yeah. you know, I didn't go through with you, and then vice versa. Yeah. But it's not a competition. Who has the no. worst life? No. Because you know, you get that of, oh, you know, life has treated me off. Yeah, you know, <laughs> which is fine. It's okay. But do something out of it. You know, don't just sit there and be miserable with your life. Hate everyone because you're and, like, but you. But if tell- you need to sit in it, like I say, sit in the shit. If you need to sit in that for a little while, that's okay. Like I had to learn at, at 29, it was okay to be angry. Like that is a healthy emotion. I agree. I agree with that. But like you learn. Yeah, but you have to, but I say that to say, sit in your shit. Mm. And then somebody once asked me, are you going to be a victim of your circumstances or a victor despite them? Well, that's nice. I like that. I'm going to use it. <laughs> I was a victim for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And it didn't change anything. It didn't fix anything. And I was so angry all of the time when I finally decided that I was going to be someone that I could love and be proud of, despite all of the crap that I've survived, Mm -hmm. I won. I won because I'm able to sit across from you and look at this person and celebrate her. And I couldn't do that for so many years. So it's it's a journey. And wherever you are in yours, like, that's okay. Mm. But y- you have to decide, and, and you have the right to decide what you do with, with your story. Um, now I'm just choosing to to put mm. mine out there. That's all. That's the only difference, you know? <laughs> uh, can I ask you, how did people... Uh, take it when you came out so family friends you know all your environment mm. Mm. <laughs> oh boy um so damn um you don't have to talk about it if you don't want i don't want to i don't want to ask you anything that you don't uh, i will say that parts of my family uh mm-hmm. are in denial about it okay uh that are not okay with it Mm -hmm. um i have some friends that just don't understand but but love me and that's and that's i appreciate that honesty yes and then i when i moved to vermont and went to to college and Mm -hmm. built the life that i wanted i i was really as out as i've ever been um and, and that's kind of where i got my first introduction to who I fell in love with. And um, I, I won't always say that it's been easy. I, I will say I'll also get off this live and for the first like day and a half, I will be wondering who will see this. And if like anytime my phone rings, like, mm, like what's gonna come at me. Um, but I made a choice that I wasn't going to sit with their decisions anymore just as they have the right to decide how they respond to me i have the right to live my life nobody nobody is being hurt by my decision to love someone but i know that somebody feeling unloved and alone is painful and harmful so i i chose The, the, what I felt was less painful and that is to be who I am because not being true to myself and only sharing certain parts of myself still left me incredibly lonely and depressed and angry. So how, how much better off was I? Uh, but it's, it's not always to, to protect them i i will say there there was a sentence said to me years ago that i will never forget i don't think i will ever be over um and i and i think about it a lot but 
um, I can say I am happier now celebrating all of who I am than I ever was hiding it. And that to me, mm, that's everything. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand that because at the end of the day, it's, it's what you're saying, you know, you're not, it doesn't affect <laughs> someone in no. any way. <laughs> no. Like, I, like, the the best way I can say it is, um, and please understand, I'm not here to bash anyone. Just as I have a right to feel the way that I feel about my communities, so too does somebody else who doesn't yeah, yeah. agree with it or understand. Mm -hmm. I don't personally celebrate that journey, <laughs> but I acknowledge they have the right to feel that way. But the best way I can describe it is, um, for those that are against a celebration of love and identity and, and self-esteem, because that's what that is. Unless I am forcing you to be married to me against your will, who I love does not impact you. Yes. So stay in your house, in your lane, mm. and I'm going to, and we are going to love who we love so long as it is healthy and respectful and consensual yes. because we deserve that just like everybody else. And if you don't agree with that, I, I feel sorry for you. I really do. You know, people can be like, I mean, you know, they can feel what they won't feel. They can be like angry and hateful and that's fine. Yep. But I, it just drives me crazy when I, uh, I think I said this, I think it was in the live with Ria that there was, that was incredible. I know it was. Oh. <laughs> oh, you see, it is that that example of people like making you live the life they want, like for society or for culture or yeah. for religious, yeah. which is crazy that things like that still go on, and it's two thousand twenty-one. It still happens. But what I was saying is that there was a, like a hate crime towards a teenager, and he was like, yeah, beaten up in the street here in England somewhere because you know he's gay and. I mean, it's the UK and like there's things like that in America. There's things in, mm -hmm. like that in Greece also, which I was saying it in the live with Kimi yesterday, yep. that two girls were beaten up and they weren't even gay. Like they were just holding hands. Yeah. Thought, yes, and that's, I don't understand why you need to, or for example, what we were saying about hate comments. Like, why do you have to get out of your way? Keep it pushing. Like, keep going. Like, there's no reason for that. Like, I understand Just that usually keep people pushing. like that. Yeah, people like that are probably miserable. And, you know, they have other things going on. But, you know, other people can take it with a laugh. But then at the other time, you know, you can just... You know, a lot of people are not in a good place. So no. that can just, you know, make the situation worse. Ex uh, hello. Like, you have no idea what somebody is going through behind closed doors. And you truly mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. not know. Somebody could be hanging on by a thread. Yes. And doing the best that they can to do whatever they have to. And it will take one comment to undo it all. To, at, at the very best, to make them sad. And at the very worst, to make them give up. And you don't have that right. You don't. So love, accept. Or, and if you, please, if you cannot do that, if you cannot approach this with love and respect and celebration, just go. Just keep going because you tearing down somebody else it just makes you a piece of shit. It's not gonna take you higher. No. Yes. No. Yeah. You get that. And that's <laughs> and that's the other thing. I'm gonna give you another. You see, I'm here. I'm just here, spreading the love. You see. I'm I'm just here <laughs> having an amazing conversation with an amazing person. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to say that I also will give you this that. You know, a lot of the times we also see this, that besides, yeah, obviously the hate people and all that, people that are actually trying to influence, like you are doing and I'm doing, and you know, there's a lot of people out there yeah. that are trying to do something. Even if they are, they're not, and it's only like a fun channel, that's fine also. But 
Yeah. I was reading this because is, this is a YouTuber I watch and she's like all about how you do the promotions and this and that and mm -hmm. the algorithm. So, you know, I take a lot of, um, I get educated on topics from yeah. her. And she was saying when she started like years back, she started doing, because she's like big now and everything. Yeah. Thank you to, thank you to both of you. <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. Time. <laughs> thank you for being here and watching us. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she was saying that when she started YouTube, like years, years before it was a thing and before like, you know, YouTube was all about the money and becoming famous and all that part. She was saying that, you know, the community was all about helping each other. And, you know, I was subscribed yeah. to you, you were subscribed to me, I will support you, put your, like, you know, put your How my How did page. you go from love to competition? Yes, and that's what I, I really loved with you. It's something that maybe I know with you, maybe three people now, <laughs> that, yes, um, that actually support each other. And it's not a competition yeah. of who has, who has the more followers. Who your, more your success as a person, as you, as, as the woman that I, that I celebrate, your success does not in any way take away from mine. Your struggles, your struggles do not invalidate mine. I am not here to compete with anyone other than myself and the goals that I had the day before. And I think right now we're so conditioned to compete and be better than, or I have this and I'm flashy. And ha uh, that's not me. That, I, that, that was never gonna be me because I was that in high school and guess what, I fell short every time i still didn't have it all i didn't have the best body i wasn't the supermodel i didn't have a boyfriend so i'm gonna celebrate you because i know how hard it is to just be successful in whatever way that you define that so i'm gonna uplift you and i'm gonna celebrate you because there's not enough of it yes that's 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 the thing that you know, I mean, since I've known you, like, as we said, it's not that long, you know, yeah. you, you put things on your page for me. And I'm not talking about the interview that we're doing. Like, it's not an interview, actually. It's a discussion. But, you know, like, even, I don't know what I've uploaded, but in general, yeah. you know, you will put, like, even the, 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 the live I did with Ria and Kelsey, you're of like, oh, hey, watch this, do this, I'm so excited about this stuff. And I love that because, like, you are doing something else. I'm doing something else. It could be the same thing, but it doesn't and, change. And anything. I would still post it. Like I am, I am out here to celebrate anything because I, as somebody who is biracial and queer and disabled, I already feel like I'm ten steps behind everybody, and I can work ten times harder than you and still not be taken seriously. So I'm just going to be out here and celebrate any tiny success because that is hard fought for anyone. I'm not trying to compete. It, yeah, I, don't, I think I just, I don't understand that because, you know, we're here, no. we help each other, we, you know, make things, make a better world, yeah. not like who's going to have more followers or money or whatever. But yeah, anyway, mm -mm. I wanted to ask you about, the, I've wrote it here, 4CP move and you, you're doing like a donation or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, shucks. You really do your homework, by the way. I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a, a community leader for an amazing foundation called the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Foundation. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I have cerebral palsy. Um, so the foundation is asking us to move for CP. That's the hashtag. Um, and it was kind of built on this premise um, that unfortunately... The statistic is probably one in every two people with my condition who could walk at one point in their life will lose that ability as they age mm -hmm. because of the impact um, of our disability on the body. Yeah. So move for CP is this celebration that you get up and move or you participate in anything that moves you emotionally, mentally, physically. Just celebrate the fact that you feel and you move. Um, but it was also really huge for me because, I mean, I, I have my blog and, and I, I try to be out here, but I've never publicly, like, 
donated to or raised or brought attention to my community. Mm -hmm. And it was a really, really beautiful thing for me to be able to give back to the community that's given me everything. I think people think about disabilities and illnesses and they, they think, oh, poor you. Mm. Um, but my life might be made more difficult because of my conditions. Don't get that twisted. It is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also been deeply enriched. Um, so I'm out here trying to celebrate who we are and, and our abilities and what moves us because we feel and we lose and we, we experience everything else that anybody else does, um, sometimes with a greater risk. And so to be able to kind of celebrate that and to kind of put it out there and also to see like the people that I love embrace it, accept it and participate in it was everything to me because it showed me that I have allies and people that are willing to say, this is a part of who you are and we're gonna embrace that. So it was really freaking cool. So this, can anyone donate, like when does the donations yeah. let's say stop? Is there like a dead? I believe Move for CP ended, I believe the, the the last day of the month mm -hmm. so meaning the the challenge the the hashtag uh week ended but that doesn't mean that that our work ends yeah. there's always going to be somebody born with with the condition that i have and they're always going to experience these symptoms yeah so my promise and pledge is that i'm always going to keep that in mind and move for my community if that's moving stigmas or moving conversations along or being active, it, that was kind of a, a challenge for me to say, I will move for this for the rest of my life. Um, because somebody, like a little version of me mm -hmm. deserves that. Like they deserve <laughs> my fight and my voice because uh, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be that for like the next little me. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. But Anyone can donate, right? Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. C can they find that on your profile? Yes. So if you go to the link um, in my in my Instagram, um, mm -hmm. my name is listed up there. Um, the link will bring down a, a a Canva page, and it I literally have a link that says "Move for CP." Mm -hmm. um, I am very appreciative for the donors who especially in a time like this gave money. But what I would like more than anything is videos to put on my profile, doing something that moves you. So I posted a picture of me reading. Mm -hmm. Somebody posted a picture of them dancing um, because that keeps the hashtag relevant. It will always be there. And it's also a celebration of you. Um, so there are a couple of ways to get involved, which is really cool. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say this publicly. So I am going to do a photo, a video. You would decide, okay? You would decide oh, what you want. So I will give you, don't decide now. You, I, I won't. I give, you, I give you like a day. Okay, so you can decide what you want and I'm also gonna do a donation. No. <laughs> Love, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, I mean, it's for a good cause and we all should. Like, you know, whoever's watching or is going to watch it, this live, you know, try. It doesn't have to be, you know, I did this mistake. Uh, like, yes, because I always like try to help in any way. Yeah. And I always thought like when you do a donation, you know, you need to give like 50 pounds. You need to give no. 100 pounds. No, that's, I feel that a lot of people have that yeah. in mind. But hey, Tasha. Um, sorry. <laughs> yes. Hi, so I feel that we always have that idea that, you know, donation means we need to give a lot of money. So then you just leave it. But it could be anything. It could be two pounds if you want to. Honestly, if you, sent dollars, me, <laughs> if you sent me a copy of this live, because I don't think, I, I, again, coming back to what you said earlier, I don't think you understand as an ally how powerful what you are doing right now is you have given me a space to talk and listen and ask questions you have moved my heart but you have moved my community because the reality is as a person who is able-bodied 
you are taken more seriously than I am. So for you to take that privilege and allow me the chance to be heard, you've already moved for us. You've already done. So that is that. And you can quote me here, y'all. That is your challenge. To send me this copy so that, so that I can celebrate you. Because you've already supported us. You're out here. Thank you so much. You're gonna make me cry on my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. But I do, I do hope um, that things do change. And not only in the, in the LGBT plus community, but also in general, because it is what you are saying, that a lot of people, which yes, they're able and, you know, they haven't been born or, you know, in, I mean, I had this guy, the first life I did, which, you know, he was born like, you know, he still have a disability and he had a no. motorbike accident and lost uh, his leg. So you never exactly. know what will happen. But that's the thing is that people don't actually take that serious because they are Until like, it becomes it's a reality. Not me. It's not me. It's not my It'll never happen. Daughter. Yes. It's not, no one that's, you know. It's not my partner, so why should I like really care? The government should care. Like the, you know, th there's always that that you know it's not yeah. my problem until it is it could, problem. It, it could become your problem. Exactly because you know it, you don't have to end up, you know, having having uh, a child and it's it's oh. born with a disability. Or you don't have to have, well, yes, knock on wood, have a a, a car accident. And, yeah. and you shouldn't celebrate or hold accountable or want change until you have a disability. You shouldn't want to embrace the queer community until maybe your friend or your partner or your child. No, celebrate it now, empower it now so that we feel safer moving on. Like mm -hmm. we're not, we're not waiting. Look, everybody could die tomorrow. For sure. So, so let's celebrate it today. Let's make it a better place today. I know. Hopefully, things will change. I do. I do hope that because uh, it's what you're saying. Like, it could be. I know that it cinema, can. And it could. It could be just like something that's so easy. It's not for other yeah. people. And I don't understand why people should, you know, lose out on things uh, yeah. because just. People don't care. It's not like you can't do it. It's because you don't want to. You won't do yes. it. Yeah. Uh, Tor says, Elna says, Ashley, we need to be friends. Yes, you do need to be friends. Hi. <laughs> I, I celebrate you and we are already friends. There you go. And what? Hope says, what's the link? I can't find it on your page. <gasps> oh, okay. Um, I, I wish that I could see the comments or else I would type it in. Yeah. Um, so my Instagram is Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-E, -E, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, underscore, I-M-E blog, and I should pop up. And then there's a link. Once you click on that, it will expand um, and say, move for CP should be at the top. But if any of you have questions, please, please feel free to reach out. Follow me after the live. I will follow you. Um, and, and let's get rolling. Literally in my wheelchair, let's get rolling. Boom, that was good. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen the link. You just have to go to ask this bio. So maybe that's where yeah. you can find it. I don't know. Uh, but yes, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. I don't know if there's anything that you want to say before we go. I just want to say thank you. I... Sometimes I celebrate the people who don't deserve it. Um, mm -hmm. You came into my life in, in probably an unconventional kind of way. <laughs> um, but I'm so, so glad that you did. You are such a light. And, I, and I've said it to you, you are a safe place. I do not want you to take that for granted um, because that is so deeply unique um, and you matter what you're doing matters and your page is special um so just just don't change okay yes for sure thank you so much for today i do appreciate it and yes you keep doing what you're doing because I, I more people need to know about things and get educated if you don't know 
just ask. 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 It's open for people to DM her, ask things. You know, she's there. She's not like a... I promise you, I am I am the same person that you're seeing right now. Out like, I I truly mean what I say. Um, I and I am here to celebrate you. So l- let's build each other up, <laughs> just as Face the Elephant has done their whole time. Thank you so much. Thank have a lovely you. evening. I hope we have another live. Don't forget the challenge. You oh, yes. tell me what I have to do. Like send you a video done or whatever. And done. <laughs> Bye everybody. This was a real pleasure. Thank you. It was awesome. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.